Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer. Welcome back to Yacht Racer. 2004. <clears throat> this is like two or three days after the, I recorded the last episode. Um, so, obviously not too much has changed, but... Just making sure. I think we already put everybody in a race. And if I sound weird or anything, I'm just tired. It, it's been such a long week. And, um... <clears throat> I'm just happy to be playing Galp Racer. And, uh... As always, appreciate you guys for love and support on the channel. Uh, we've been growing quite well. We, we really have. Um... I know it doesn't necessarily... Uh... Well, I, I guess I should say, I know it's not necessarily reflected always in the comments or the Discord, but like, I mean, you know, I check my analytics weekly, frequently, and um, yeah, the channel's growing quite nicely, so appreciate you guys if you're new and if you're just one of those viewers that doesn't comment, I get it, because I do the same thing, um, so yeah, I appreciate you guys. Welcome to the HRG fam. Anyways, we're up with Irish Legend, who... Did I race with Irish Legend before? I did, right? It wasn't a good race. I don't think it was. Anyways, Irish Legend is up in an open. Yeah, I did race with Irish Legend, but like it wasn't a good race at all. Cause I, you know, I remember this horse's distance starts at ten furlongs, so yeah, should be long distance. Um, I'm gonna run the horse in the middle of the field, mid pack. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the background as well, but I have the Gal Racer 3 soundtrack going on. I like to have some sort of background music. It just kind of feels weird playing Gal Racer with no the music gate. at all. Which is weird because I used to do that all the time. Now it's just like it's... I don't know. It, just, it doesn't work for me. I need I need something. Like the in-game music I'm just kind of sick of because I mean I've heard it for well over 20 years of my life, you know? <clears throat> Um, so yeah, you know, I just like having different things, so you guys let me know if you would uh, like the different Gout Racer soundtracks in the back of our episodes, or if you'd prefer no music, I guess. Nobody's commented anything about it, so I don't think it bothers anybody, per se, but you never know. So, I don't know about Irish Legend. Like, this horse, and when I say I don't know, it's not like I'm giving up on the horse. I'm saying, like, I don't know exactly where the horse wants to be, you know? Okay. I really don't. Because Vivid Legend, won. Irish Fleet. I thought they both were Proceeders, were they not? I think they were. I think they both were Proceeders. So the horse should want to be at the back. Stamina's not maxed out. I just I don't know about this horse. We'll see. Show your heart. Here we go. Okay, lost the head to head. That's not good. But come on, Irish. You're the second favorite here. And obviously, I also have to do a good job as the jockey, but I just, I don't understand this horse. I just don't know where or how I'm supposed to run it. Uh, hopefully I can redo this, because I certainly don't want to lose the horse. You know what? This is going to be one of those episodes where I'm going to have to, like, go into, like, exhibition and, like, run a couple of races to figure out where this horse needs to be. That makes a big difference, finding out the positioning. D... Yeah, I just, I don't want those type of results to stay because, like, that's not helping us. So, I'm going to go to exhibition mode and, yeah, I'm going to run really short races, like six furlongs, <clears throat> and just figure out where Irish Legend wants to be because it just, it makes no sense to me. Oh, wait, no, 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 no save, no save because that was a really bad race. We're not saving. Ah, there we go. All right. <clears throat> uh, is it an extra mode? Yeah, it is. You would think I should have this stuff completely memorized. It's really one of those type of days or nights. I'm telling you, it's just, it's going to be like that for the episode. So just bear with me. I'll just try my best not to make it so bad. All right. So, you know what? I knew I forgot to do something. I didn't even register the horse. I'm like, why am I still, I was still sitting there thinking like, what did I do? <clears throat> all right. Well, as we're going through all this, what I wanted to say, or what I wanted to continue saying about Irish Legend is... The horse has a lot of power in there. I feel it. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just still not sure where the horse wants to be. 
Um, lost a head-to-head, -head, which is discouraging. That's not something you want to see on your horses, obviously. Losing head-to-head -head battles. Could have a late growth type? Oh, yeah. Definitely will have a late growth type because of Vivid Legend. Greater. I mean, later growth type. But <clears throat> the thing is, I don't know how long or how quick that'll be because you got to think about it. Uh, Secret or Vivid Gemstone. He's from Vivid Legend. He was a monster at two years old, and pretty much the same for Tigris of Stone. So, they both came from Vivid Legend. I'm not sure what the deal is with Irish here. Do you guys think it's a possibility the parents just aren't that compatible? Vivid Gemstone. This guy. Five grade ones already. Nine wins out of 11 starts. And he's only three years old. About to be four. At least Cowboy. That's not who I'm looking at. Uh, Tigris of Stone. Tigris, 7 grade ones, 11 wins and 19 starts. She's 4 years old, so I don't think it's a Vivid Legend problem, and I don't think it's an Irish Fleet problem. But let's see, who is doing very well that's from Irish Fleet that we currently have? Butterfly Effect, there's a big one. She might be one of the only ones. I don't know if we have any Irish, any other Irish Fleet horses around. Wow, it's just Irish Fleet, it's just Butterfly Effect and Irish Legend. Everybody else is not from Irish Fleet, so... She should... I mean, Irish Legend should be a good horse. I don't know, like I said, what I'm personally uh, kind of forgetting or just not understanding about the horse, I guess I should say, but it's, it's interesting. The stamina was very low, I, I would say, in that last race. The distance at minimum is 10 furlongs, which, again, I'd be shocked if they gave me a horse that wanted to run 10 furlongs at minimum and then they give him, like, awful stamina... I'd be like, wow, RNG is really just kicking my butt here. But <clears throat> I think he may be a horse that potentially has a legitimate later growth type. You know, um, Vivid Gemstone, Tigris of Stone, you know, they peaked. I mean, not peaked quickly, but they hit their, their, their potential pretty fast compared to, you know, maybe some other horses. So vivid legends growth type i think i've told you guys before it's not as long in this game as it is in 2003 which is interesting it's i bring it up all the time but the different nuances of just like how the gout racers differ from gout racer 3 gout racer 2001 and then so on and so forth like each iteration of the game is different that's why i just it will never i will never understand when people are like oh it's just gout racer they all play the same i'm like they don't they really don't <laughs> They do not play the same. All right, let's go ahead and add Irish Legend. So I apologize, this is taking a start. And I decided when I do things like this, I'll probably just add extra time to the end of the episode. So since this is taking up about 10 minutes so far of no racing, no real racing that counts, we'll add that on to the end of the episode and I feel like we'll be done. All right, so Irish Legend, you should be good. I got to figure out where he wants to be. I just don't know. Is the horse a is the horse a closer? And difficulty, yeah, let's crank it up, obviously, because that's what we're playing on. So we need to make sure we can get this horse in the right window. I've tried running this horse as a mid pack runner, D position. I feel like I've tried running him as a proceeder, D position. I think or A, D or A. So to me, this horse is either a front runner or a closer. This race, I'm going to run him as a closer. Let me see what happens. Um, and go from there, because again, it just it doesn't make sense. This horse should be mid horse to Proceeder, and I don't feel like day. either of those two worked. Perfect start, wow. And the way to go. That was a great start. Uh, The braking isn't bad. This horse might be a front runner. That'd be really interesting. But I'm going to run this race as a closer. See what they give me. If that doesn't work, we'll run them as a proceeder. And if they're still saying that the positioning isn't right, then it's like some weird, like, proceeder front runner type of deal or some weird closer to mid type of deal. Like, stamina's really low. This horse. This horse. Did I say the horse? Yeah, this horse. Yeah, let's talk about Wraith Horses, guy. This horse so might legitimately cat. have a late growth type. Like, legitimately. I can't remember the... I mean, Long Live Bolero is the last horse we've had that had a, a real growth late growth spurt. 
didn't peek until almost six. Okay, so we have stretch burst. That's nice. Finish. Loses the head to heads quite a bit. That's. And I know that's, I think, a characteristic from Vivid Legend, but Vivid Legend wasn't a type of horse to get, uh, you know, seriously discouraged. I was thinking about other S words. I just didn't know which one I was going to use. Pos D on the position. I'm really going to be shocked if this horse is like a legitimate front runner. <clears throat> I at least need to get A on the position. It doesn't have to be a perfect S or double S. A lets me know I'm, I'm pretty close in the ballpark. But if we're not getting anything close to A, then that means I'm way off. <clears throat> yeah, very interesting. So, stamina is pretty low considering. Distance is 10 furlongs minimum. And, and apparently doesn't want to run towards the back. Like, what What type of horse do we have? I, I'm i telling you, I feel the power and potential in here, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work out. It's just what I feel when I'm riding with the horse. So I'm going to send the horse to the front. I, I haven't gotten any sevens on any of the races, so... It's so strange. It really is. This is like the second or third horse, I think, in our series that we've... You know, I had to take a little bit of time trying to figure out. I just feel like the, the light type is super weird. Two, since this go. horse doesn't want to lose head to heads, we obviously got to get them in front. Get him in front, I should say. That's what I meant to say. So you see, no matter what I do, and the horse is fighting much better right here. This front running light type might actually be the key. We get stretch burst, okay, so nice. Second place, that's a much better effort. At least give me A on positioning, please. A means we are close. A, yes. So this horse is like a front runner to Proceeder, so I just need to run him towards the front. Regardless. Like, he needs to be within the top four, top five at the front. Because apparently he is not a... He doesn't want to lead. Yeah, I wonder if it's... What horse do we recently have where, like, their leg type was, like, mid to Proceeder? I can't remember who, but it was very, very, very just, like... I couldn't understand how, why I wasn't figuring it out and why the game wasn't telling me. And then when I finally figured it out, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like both triangles are shaded for mid and Proceeder, which... Uh, again, it's just one of those 2004 annoyances I can't stand. Like, why is this hidden? Like, let me know. You know, at some point, you figure out your horse's preference before you hit the track. That's not always the case, obviously. There are plenty of racehorses that sometimes owners and trainers don't really know where they want to be, or jockeys, until they've raced with them a couple of times. That's not every single horse out there. We all know that, so. All right, let's try this again. This time I know what I'm doing. Keep the horse at the front and get an early start, because he can't lose head-to-heads. Yeah, cannot lose head-to-heads at all, so. Feel the 14, second favorite. Yeah, let's try this again. Losing head-to-heads is no bueno, right? <laughs> so, um... The horses yeah, hopefully the gate. this goes a lot better. And the way to go! That was a beautiful start. I really do hope this horse has a legitimate late growth type and will turn into an absolute monster. Because for the stamina to be so low, the braking is not super great right from the jump. I mean, that to me just points at a horse that whose stats haven't developed yet. Vivid Legend and Irish Fleet both have great individual stats for categories, so I highly doubt this horse just got shafted. Could've. Could've gotten the RNG shaft or something, but I don't think that happened. I, I just think it's... Maybe a long, long game with this horse. You know what I mean? Like, it may legitimately be a three, four year okay, this is where the race is won. journey until this horse is really where it's supposed to be. I'm going to say two to three years, you know, is what I would like. But you never know. Three or four could, could be the reality. Okay. I'm just gonna start. I may have gotten going a tad bit too soon, but and they're in the home stretch. I don't know. 
God. Iris, this horse is... I just... I just don't feel like we're there yet, clearly, because, I mean, this horse is only two years old and... Just goes backwards. I <laughs> Lost stamina. We don't have great stamina. Ugh. Oh, this is rough. This is really, really rough. I wonder if I should even... D on the... This game is not making any sense. One minute I have a good position rating, then I have a bad one. This horse is making things kind of difficult, I'm not going to lie. I, I would hate for so much of this episode to be of just me trying to figure things out with Irish Legend, but like... What do they mean I was supposed to finish second? It just... I promise you guys it's one of those horses that's... It, it's tricky. You guys know. These horses pop up in my games every blue moon. Is a front runner. I, okay, well that's good to know. I mean, I... I this game just doesn't make sense sometimes. Like, I did that in the previous exhibition race. We're like, oh, A ranked. I mean, what? How how much further in the front do they need me to be, and how soon? They got to the front pretty quickly in the um, the race before the last one we did. So like, I'm not complaining. I'm just glad we know now. But it's like I I did that before. Yeah, I'm going to run this horse nine furlongs. No, you know what? I need to run shorter because the stamina is clearly not there yet. What am I talking about? And they haven't revealed a single stat. Just distance, course preference, and leg type. Which, at the end of the day, the leg type is the most important thing for me. Distance, like, I don't always run my horses in their preferred distances and we still win grade ones and titles. So, that to me is not a big deal. Like, there was some Yahoo on my channel recently. It was like, oh, the reason why you're not winning is because you're not running the horse at the preferred distances. I'm like, no, like, those were just bad races that I messed up, really, most of the time. Occasionally, every blue moon, there will be a race where it's like, okay, I should have been smarter about putting my horse in a race that maybe didn't suit its distance. Range. Distance range is what I'm saying. Okay, if it's, it, like, for example, Toxic Blonde, right? Toxic Blonde, okay, not a good example because the game is still keeping her max distance for me. Tigers of Stone. Now, she has a wide range, right? 7 to 13. We have proven with her that I think we can run her six, hence why she's still in the GWS sprint title, right? And could I run her longer than that? At her prime? Possibly. Like, when I say longer than that, I mean longer than 13 furlongs, her max? Maybe. Point is, you can run your horses outside of their preferred distances. You need to know your horse. You need to know their stats. You need to know if they're going to be suitable for that. I mean, seriously, we've won quite a, a number of races without running my horses in their preferred distance. It's just, I swear, man. So, the God Razor community is awesome. You guys know this. But, like, at the same time, there are some people in the community. I'm just like, you're not fun. Like, you're just kind of annoying. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's just like, sometimes people just say things that don't even make sense. It's like, this is a, a video game. You, you can kind of improvise to an extent. I, I keep, I feel like I've been saying that on this channel for years. Like, especially in the last year. I'm like, improvise. Do some different stuff. Like, this is not like work. This isn't, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to do things in such a robotic A, B, C, D. Like, you know? You you, you can free flow with Gallup Racer to an extent. I think I, I've, I've proven that. <laughs> you can free flow with this game and still have massive success. It may take a bit longer. And it might be a bit more challenging, which I personally like. Like, I don't want this game to get too easy. Then I won't want to play it anymore, personally. But, you know what I mean? It's always somebody, right? <laughs> Anyways, Toxic Blanche. She's up in the London Mile. Um, not the favorite. Doesn't need to be. Modest. Yeah, like, I don't even care who has favoritism. It's a competitive field, though. There's, like, including us, there's actually seven horses that can win this race. That's pretty wild. <laughs> I'm surprised first time isn't the favorite, to be honest with you. Flying Fan, that's a good horse. Just not much of a big, big chance today. But yeah, it's a, it's a relatively competitive field. Like Usually you get, I think I said it in the last episode or the one before that, you'll get competitive fields that'll have two or three strong horses you may be running against. It's rare to get a race where like half of the field is so competitive that, you know, any one of those horses could win. So this is a field of 12? Field of 12. Like I said, six or seven horses, if I'm including Flying Fan, could realistically win this race. That, that's unusual. You don't have that many horse races where there's just like so many horses that could win it at the highest level. Usually you have a couple that you're really zeroed in on that you think look the strongest. 
So she's still fast. She's still about to hit her peak. I wish that stamina would be in the mid-60s. My gosh. Then we could actually go for a GWS turf title with her. It's going to be tough, man. The turf title will be really tough because that means she's going to have to run at 10 furlongs. And I mean, it, the thing is, it could be done. It could be done. I'd have to, like, overmanage her stamina. And it's like, do I really want to do that? The horses are on the track. Like, who wants to do that? Every Blue Moon doing that okay, but, like, I don't want to do that with every one of her races until I retire her because she has no stamina. That's... You know, like, yes, you have to be aware of your horse's stamina. Make sure you're not, you know, obviously uh, running them dry, but you shouldn't have to make it such a hardcore focus every race. That's, that's essentially what I don't want to do. That's all I'm saying. And I don't want to make it such a focus just to try to win a race. That sh like, my horses and should have go. decent enough stamina where, like, I don't have to, like, overthink it, you know? Toxic Blonde is one of the... Uh, one of the worst horses as far as her stamina is concerned currently on track. I mean, I don't know who else has, like... Might be somebody else with a 58. Maybe Bolero? Outside of that, I don't think any of my other horses have below 58 stamp right now, so... Yeah, she, she's definitely, uh... Tail end of the field with that, but she's got a 7 here, so she's in prime position to maybe get this win, and she needs it. I don't even remember who we're competing against in this field as far as the GWS is concerned. We slow down because the AI like to do this thing where they're going to run hard okay, up until that this point. Is where and they the just, all of a sudden, just tell the horse to stop. My oh, God, interesting. Alright, Toxic. Another seven. Yes, let's go. Okay, we're going to move over. Oh, don't want to block. There we go. She's gone. No Revo. I don't think she needs it. She's got the speed, man. 84. This field's going to have to catch her. Five still staying with us. Eight still staying with us. The nine is reeling. Uh, that might be the favor, but Toxic Blonde, she's holding in. She's holding on and holding in here. Half a furlong left to go. Close race. Okay, you gotta love that in, in crunch time and she gets it done. That's our girl. That's what I mean, man. The longer distance races, that, that would be a headache to manage. But in these short races, short races and distances, there I go, combining words again. Uh... This is this is her playground, really. I mean, she she is a sprinter. We always knew she was going to be a sprinter from day one, and that's a big win. That's a huge win, and that should put her in first for the GWS Turf, or excuse me, Sprint. Wasn't even supposed to win that race. The nine horse that was challenging us, that was the favorite, modest style, flying fan, ended up finishing in fifth. Almost a perfect race. Toxic blonde, man. Ah, uh, it's so amazing. That she's doing better than I thought because I remember when she was in the barn, uh, you know, or actually like out of the pasture. I'm just like, ah, she might be a handful, but I, I had a feeling she would still be fast, at least to some extent. Uh, she's very fast, really. And on top of that, she's actually, she's overachieving. Like, I, I thought it was just going to be a couple of G1 races and that was about it. I didn't really see title aspirations with her but like she could legitimately win the sprint here and that'd be awesome you know to have a legitimate sprinter like that actually win a title fiery dancer couldn't get it done she's in the barn right now for breeding purposes but she couldn't win a title so toxic blonde would be our first filly in a while as a legitimate sprinter well she's about to be a brood mare or a mare but i can't remember the last one we've had la turf with free fear here how long was that race Six furlongs, sorry about that. Yeah, that was her sixth grade one win. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, obviously, compared to our other horses, but she's doing well, man. Considering, she's doing pretty well. And it's just really a matter of me putting her in the right place to win the race. She's proven she's got the speed. She has that close race ability okay, which is fantastic. So, yeah, for a horse I wasn't really thinking about using for breeding, she's making quite a case for herself, which always seems to be the case with, with the girls, right? For my series, like, when I'm hesitant or undecided if I'm going to use them for breeding, then they always end up making me eat my words. Is that what I need to do from now on? To get, like, the awesome horses? Just, like, say, like, they're not going to be that great? You know, and then they turn out to be amazing? <laughs> Free Fear, she's up. Fast, fast filly. Uh, stamina should be hitting 70 soon, I hope. And she can run on turf or dirt. She's got a perfect distance range. She can run as a proceeder or a front runner. And stretch burst. 
She's an S-ranked filly. I'm glad I picked her up, and I think she will also be a, a nice um, brood mare to eventually have in the back of the barn. Like, gosh, so many horses, man. So, so, so many horses. The horses are on the track. I'm trying to build families, you know? Like, as far as the families that we have in this game compared to our others, we have the flying cowboy family from Western Tiger, right? We have all those horses. We have the sedate ruler family who still hasn't achieved what I've wanted them to. Speaking of Western Tiger, has the record here. We have the Bolero family. The horses. Gemstone? The Do we have like a legitimate? I guess we're we're getting to having a gemstone family. And they're off. You know, compared to like our Galbracer 3 series, where I feel like we have obviously three or four distinctive families, and that's obviously mainly because you can only breed a certain way in that game, which is one horse a year. Or, well, not one horse a year, but you can only breed the parents together once, and then that's it. They're gone, essentially, until you buy them back if you wish to do so if they weren't created horses. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, as far as, like, legitimate long-term, like, third and fourth generation families, that's really what I'm saying. Like, I think, at least for me personally, I'm not saying this is how it's actually done in real life. This is just my preferences. Like, for a horse family to be recognized in my playthroughs, I at least want them to be three or four generations deep. If it's just two generations, that's not enough, because sometimes stretch. I break off at that point and do different breeding stuff, but if we have three or four generations in the same family, then that tells me we're building something, you know? Okay, so, this is where the race is won. Like Vivid Legend and Pink Gemstone, that to me is a family. There's there going to be a lot of siblings, I think, on track that come from those two horses because they've given us great horses, two great horses so far. Like, I trust them and I trust their breeding, so. Alright. Two furlongs to go. Run them down, free. Or did I get her going too soon? Oh, they're still with us. Yikes. They may have gotten her going a tad bit too soon. Hold on, my girl. Hold on. Okay, she's just gonna get it done. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I don't know why I've been doing that. I think it's the second race in this episode. I kind of just got the horse going like half a furlong too soon. She gets the win, which is the most important thing. <laughs> I don't think it was ever really in doubt, but I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit worried. That's her fifth grade one win. That's also at 10 furlongs. Free fear. She's, she's simple, man. Really simple filly. Getting the job done. Doing exactly what you, you ask and you need. You guys know the dealio. No complaints from me. Butterfly effect. She's up. Saturn stakes. Oh, is she chasing a GWS title? <coughs> sorry about that. <coughs> and sorry again. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, two races. Or, excuse me, two... No, I think she does need two more races to get whatever title I'm working on for her, which would be... Oh, no, never mind. She's a little bit ways off for the mid-champ. <laughs> yeah. A little bit ways off. Probably still another three wins at the mid-champ distance. But she is the favorite, which it's been a while since she's been the favorite. Like, that's odd. <laughs> you know? Since she's been past her peak for so long. Quite surprised to see her as the favorite here. But she looks good. She looks confident. And it is amazing how good she has remained. I don't think she's going to have a major drop-off. I think I could continue to race her for as long as I wanted if I really, really wanted to. The only thing is, I would love to get foals from Butterfly Effect sooner than later. And like I said, I mean, she's run... She's been running two... Going on three years past her prime, and she's still winning. Like, it's just... She's, she's still too competitive. Until I feel like it's going to be harder to win, for one, international grade ones... And domestic, then that's when I'll be like, okay, I'll retire. Her. Like I'm not gonna just drop her to grade threes and grade twos. Like once she can't really win grade ones or be competitive in them anymore, is when I would say she's probably, uh, you know, hit her limit. Not saying I won't retire her earlier than that, but that's when I'm going off with her now. And another track with Western Tigers record. It's really amazing when you guys think about it. Western Tiger has really paved the future for us in this game for me for us our strongest horses have all somehow come from western tiger at some point most of them have 
you know, most of them have come from him. And then through Flying Cowboy and our other horses, Honest Pegasus, you know, so... Western Tiger, man, great, great, great early game sire if he pops up for you, for sure. <clears throat> okay, Butterfly Effect, she wants to be leading by a little bit more than this, so let's create some separation. Who is running with me? Do you have a chance? Lovely song, you do, okay. See, I I'm a lot... I feel a lot better when horses running with us this high up are also, like, competitive horses that can maybe win. When it's a horse that's supposed to finish, like, 12th, I'm just like, you're ruining my race because you're probably not even going to finish in the top 10, and then they never do. But a horse like Lovely Song, where she has a chance, I didn't mind that horse running up that far. Now, we're running kind of hard here with Butterfly Effect. I hope I'm not pushing they her They are midway hard. down the back stretch. Max Stam, that's actually a good sign, and her Stam's still good and solo. She's so strong, man. It's been a while since I've been able to run her this freely okay, at the front. The I, I can't run. even remember the last race she was able to run with this much freedom and space. It's been a while. I'm not going to lie, I kind of forgot. She can hug the inside rail. She doesn't have to do anything crazy. If they're coming now, that's fine. You can go ahead and put a stop to that. Here we go. Oh, last corner leader. Keep them in front. Keep them in front. Keep them behind. You stay in front. Great runoff. Let's go, my girl. Let's go, my girl. The favorite in the Saturn Stakes butterfly effect. She's got plenty of stamina left to go. The four and the eight, they're trying to put a challenge there. They're keeping up with us, but they're not going to catch our girl butterfly effect. She gets it done again. It's another grade one victory for the queen. Just butterfly effect doing butterfly effect type of things. Shocker, right? Boom. Let's go, baby. All right. Well, those performances hopefully are making up for the circus ride that was the first 20 minutes of this episode. A lovely song actually finished nowhere near us, and we got double S on the spurt. <laughs> ah, she's so good. She's so good, man. Honestly, Butterfly Effect is amazing. She's... It's really an awesome experience that I wanted her to be special because, again, the, her name is one of my favorite songs, at least for, you know, uh, fitness-related things and working out and just kind of getting myself hyped, just trying to improve, get stronger. You know, that song does it for me, and the fact that she's performing in a way of how I feel or how you can feel when listening to that song, if, you know, if it's your genre of music, like, that's that's awesome, man. Just she, She's so fun. So strong, running her free. Yeah, it's it's weird because as a front runner, she's not boring to ride with, you know? I've been on other front runners that were just kind of boring, you know? There was nothing to it. We never got challenged. I'm not saying Butterfly Effect hasn't done that either. I mean, I think she's blown away a lot of her competition, but it's, it's just something about the way she rides and she runs that is it's just, you know, it, 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 it's fun to work with. And it's the fact that she's able to stay so strong for so long. If she was just doing this stuff as a three-year-old and then that was it and she hit her wall, then okay. But the fact that she's still running how she was when she was three years old and she's about to be six, I think that's the biggest thing for me. She's staying so competitive well beyond her prime. But it's like she's still in her prime even though she's not. You know, it's just awesome horse. Four more operas up. His stats are dropping quite a bit uh, as of recently. Uh, he's been on the decline since he was three years old, but um, yeah, I would say some of these stats are really starting to drop uh, a lot more. So I don't know when I'm going to retire. I think I said next year I was probably going to try to retire him. I could race him longer, but it's just like, I don't want to have that many horses. You guys know the deal. And he's the achieved enough. Are on the track. Like, I don't need to run him till he's seven. Well, what am I going to gain out of doing that? Outside of frustration just for having too many horses. <laughs> He's done well enough so far. We'll try to get him another title or two or whatever. I find it hilarious. All these r tracks and uh, these records are set by horses we've used. Like every single one of them. The horses are in I think the, in the last four races, or at least the last three for sure. Go. All right, Mr. Opera. You are the second. Who is the first favorite? I wasn't even looking. Fine way. Hmm. Okay. Well, 
we're gonna go ahead and just drop to the back here and beautiful gray the five horse what is that lovely letter I'm supposed to potentially finish third too it's a beautiful gray actually you know what i'm doing i'm going to just stay here to the inside i thought about moving to the outside i thought they were going to like bunch in which now they're doing but i'll make my move to the outside once we get later into the race i don't think i need to do it now On cruise control with formal opera here. That's really all there is to do. It's so weird running him like this, just because obviously his biggest wins in his career, most of them came from him being closer towards the front. It wasn't like he stayed at the back all the way until turn four, then decided to make a move. Now, we have to play some catch up because we are quite a ways back. They are midway down the back stretch. Okay, he can run at this speed. This is fine. Okay, this is where the race is won. And I probably shouldn't have kept him so far back, but I mean, like I said, it's fine. He's strong enough to handle it. I think we gotta roll him up now because this field, they're gonna. We wanna catch them napping. Okay, beautiful. So oh, look at that. I don't even know if I need to whip. I'm just going to go ahead and just do this for the rest of the race. Okay, field is closing now, so that didn't last as long, and I could have botched it. Is it a stamina thing again? It is. I guess I'm going too soon, huh? Wow. Going way too soon. I don't know why that's happening, to be honest. I really don't. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's just something I have to just figure out and just be more mindful of. I think I'm just... Yeah, I think I'm just... I'm pushing them too early, too fast, and... You know, obviously, it, it's causing them to tank. But, I mean, that was supposed to be really four for four. So that is a little bit annoying. That was not a good showing. Toxic Blonde. Wow, she is clearly ahead of the GWS Sprint. This is hers to win. Modest Style can't compete, and neither can anybody else. So, it looks like Toxic Blonde is potentially going to be your GWS winner this year. I mean, Tigris, I don't even think there's any point to keep her in there. Toxic Blonde, I think, deserves it. Tigris has got to win a title. I just don't know which one to put her in. Like, the turf is probably... The turf is not... I think we still have time. Black Ruby, she's run away with the dirt, so shocker. You know what? I'm going to switch Tigris to the turf, actually. No, who is run? Butterfly effect. Uh, mind you, something else at 10, I guess, right? And it's amazing that she's able to bounce back into a race so quickly. Four weeks later, she's ready to go again. Butterfly effect is like literally a super horse. Hmm, World Philly and Mare Turf Cup. She could do that. Yeah, she could definitely do this. You know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Mid-champ category. She has five titles, right? 21 wins, 14 grade ones. I'd like for her to hit 20 grade one wins before we retire her. I say like. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's just that would be the goal. Not tack. My goodness. I just wanted to see... Yeah, five titles. Working on that mid-champ one. Okay, Formal Opera. That's been my career with Formal Opera. Like, dropping those type of races and then winning everything else. He's done enough. 15 grade 1, 17 wins. But, I mean, I don't think I should retire him yet. He still only has the two titles, right? For the three? Oh, he has four titles. I forgot, because we got Generalist and Mid-Champ at the same time. So, I think I'm just working on a Turf title for him. A Turf title at what distance? Uh, Mile Champ and Sprint Champ. I'm not working on the other titles. So, what the heck am I... I... Okay, you know what? 
Let's run him seven. Let's run him in a sprint. Let's see how he handles that. I mean, he's dirt horse, not a turf horse. He still has a good turf rating because, I mean, he's freaking secretariat, but you guys get it. You amazing girl. Her speed attribute just dropped, and so did her stamina. So she's at her peak as we speak. Yeah, those 40s and the 50s aren't pretty, obviously, but the rest of, like, she has heart, a lot of heart, and I think that's helped her. Only six grade one wins, um, but 10 wins out of her 20 starts, and that's because it's it was a little bit up and down in the earlier stages, of, obviously, of her career, but she's been much better. So, um, yeah, GWS Sprint might be her one and only title, and I think that's all she needs. No, we're not running in the mile champ. You see, if I run her in this World Mile Cup, she's not going to be ready for that. But she might need it. We might need to do it just for the points. Because I don't know. The next one isn't all the way until the end of the year. I mean, I could save her. She's ahead by, what, 15 points? There's only one more race. I might just go ahead and save her for the China Mile. Let me just verify this is the... If there's only two more GWS Sprint races, and I I won't run her in the World Mile Cup. I'll, I would like to put her in that race, because if she could somehow win that, that'd be fantastic. But she did really fight hard to win the last one. I don't know if that's... I mean, I'm sure it's not a smart idea. If I really want to ensure that she wins, save her, wait till she's in the blue, put her in the China Mile. Like, hypothetically speaking, even if like our rival was to win that other... GWS sprint race, they still would be below us on the points. So I think I'm going to play it safe. Put her in the China Mile, man. And she wins that. She wins the GWS. She'll be retired at the end of the year. That So this China Mile coming up could very well be her last race. I don't see the need to run her any more than that. Because she wins the, G the GWS. She'll be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Wasn't expecting her to be a Hall of Fame horse at all. So... Um, Tigris, I can't even scratch you from that race. But whatever. Free Fear. Yeah, Free Fear. She's got six grade one wins. Not five, six. I may have missed one. Let's see, nine, eight. Oh, she has one at eight as well. But yeah, great stuff for Free Fear. And, um,. We're on a winning streak with her. She's making it really simple at 90 speed. She's so fast, but you see her chart in the bottom right. She's going to have a major drop-off. She's not a horse I'm probably going to run too long, but I would like to try to win as many titles with her as possible. We don't have any yet, so whenever we get our first title with her... Uh, gosh. GWS next year, the sprint? You know what I mean? I don't know. It depends. Depends. I don't want to take that away from one of our other horses if it's more suitable for them. Um. Hmm. What to do with you, Miss Fear? World Mile Cup? I mean, what would be the point in that? Because she could win that race, though. Let me see. World Mile Cup. I'm just waiting to see if there's anybody else I think would be more suitable for that race. But I don't think anybody else is even going to be able to have a chance. So you know what? Why not? Free fear. We will put you in the World Mile Cup because I don't think there's anybody else that's going to be able to run that anyways at this point. So yeah, you win that. That's a big win. I mean, it won't really matter as far as the GWS hunt for her is concerned, but that'd be a good grade one victory to have. All right. Yeah, we're going to keep rolling with butterfly effects, man. Keep rolling. Who's earned the most? She's probably the highest earning. Formal Opera's close. He has one more grade one win than her as well. But she's won more races. She's won four more races than him. But of course, he's also raced five times less. Anybody else over 100k? I don't think so, right? Courtly Lark. 13 wins and 14 starts. Courtly is just doing courtly things. And he's been on the decline for a year, so... Yeah, Golden Boys at 113. I cannot believe I'm not going to be able to put him in the Hall of Fame. 
That's such a bummer. Horse of the year and all rounder, but um His stamina's still good enough, but his speed it just his speed doesn't help him. You know, his speed is such a detriment to some of the races he could have been winning as of recently. He just doesn't have any. 61 speed with 73 stamina. Like, sure, we could still run him in the longer distance races, but he doesn't have the speed to keep a charging field from attacking him. Desert Falcon. Have I raced with this horse yet? No, this is his debut. I forgot. We, uh, we waited to put him in this grade 3 a little bit later. Desert Falcon, there he is, debuting here for HRG. Expected to finish six, so that's not terrible. But that does mean we have to do relatively well over odds. Mr. Falcon, he is from Blues, Breeze, and Fiery Dancer. So I know nothing about what he could be. This is Fiery Dancer's first fall. Our first, well, yeah, first fall. Now two years old, hitting the track for the first time. First are in the game. So let's see if Fiery Dancer ends up potentially being a better broodmare than Under I can, you know, think of. She was competitive. She had heart on the track. She didn't achieve what I wanted her to achieve, obviously, but yeah. Now, light type. Fiery Dancer was a closer or mid. She wanted to race at the back. I do remember that. Blues Breeze, I always forget. Was he mid or proceeder? He was one or the other, so I'm just going to kind of keep Desert Falcon here and see what that does. No seven. Could be a Proceeder. Could be a Closer. I don't know. They are midway down the back. The first race, I'm just going to hang at the back here and just kind of see where the stamina max is, which I don't think is going to be. It's better than Irish Legend. You guys remember me saying that earlier in the episode, okay, that horse's stamina is so bad? Which makes me wonder if it's just super late growth type, or just maybe bad RNG stats. Max Dam here, four. Desert Falcon, so that's a good sign. Now let's be mindful, Eric, not to run the horse rampant into the ground with stamina. Like, I think I get going too soon at like 2.4, and like, that's the problem. Two furlongs to go. Alright, let's go. Okay, you're supposed to finish six. Show us some fight here, Desert. Down the stretch we come. Less than a furlong and a half left to go. Desert Falcon is showing some great fight here. Wow, look at this horse dig in. This is from Blues Breeze at a Fiery Dancer. Close race okay and stretch burst simultaneously? We have a winner. Wow. Desert freaking Falcon with a fantastic debuting win in a grade three with two abilities activated simultaneously. I don't know, man. Desert Falcon. I don't want to speak too soon. You guys know I, I was really looking forward to this horse debuting since it, you know, since it arrived at the pasture. And, yeah. Like, as we got closer to this crop of two-year-olds debuting, the more excited I got about Desert Falcon. And that's one of the reasons why. This horse, pure... Sprinting Energy, Blues Breeze, Sprinting Champion, Fiery Dancer, Sprinter. Could have been a Sprinting Champion if I probably managed her a little bit better. She still did well. She did as well as she could. So, very fast horse in Desert Falcon. I hope we get to see more of that. Switching gears. Speaking of Sprinters, it's the Sprinters Cup with Lee's Cowboy. Aunt B's here. Lost Saints here. One of the favorite is Lost Saint. We're supposed to finish fourth, though. Lee's Cowboy has a chance, so... <coughs> Sorry, apologize for the sneezing. Allergies. Must be. Alright, Mr. Cowboy. Your stats are great, but like I'm not doing as well with you because I, I just don't understand. Stamina. Like this is what I mean by like bad RNG. Like, is this what they did to Irish Legend? Did they give him these type of stats? Because this is that that that's what I'm worried about with this with his stamina. I'm hoping it's just a late growth type thing, but his stamina still shouldn't be that bad as a two year old. I'm worried the game did this. Gave him all these great stats and then botched the stamina. Cowboy didn't have bad stamina and neither did Lee's gold. So how do you get Lee's Cowboy with 57? That's RNG 100%. And not good RNG. Again, I'm hoping that's not the case with Irish Legend, but... The horses are on the track.
Well, Mr. Cowboy, here's your chance to become a sprinting champion. Well, not a champion. Yeah. You win a Sprinter's Cup race, which could lead you to becoming a sprinting champion. We haven't earned that yet. In the gate. Toxic Blonde's about to earn the title of being a worldwide sprinting champion. That was you know? a beautiful start. Other horses that have won that title. Same thing. Please, Cowboy? I don't know. I could technically run him as a front runner too. He has last corner leader. I gotta make sure I get him in front. Get him in the front. Have him clear by probably by about two lanes. It should be relatively challenging for the rest of the field to catch up to us. Okay, don't run too hard, please. But there is a little bit of the front running triangle shaded, so there is a chance we can make it work. Now we gotta get your last corner leader, so we gotta get him ramped up now. Two furlongs. Let's go, go, my boy. Last corner leader, let's go. Okay, 14 and the eight horse is just driving on us, and there's literally nothing I could do. There's plenty of stamina left, which tells me I should get them going a lot sooner. Supposed to finish fourth, though. There's stretch burst. Okay, we're gonna finish fourth as long as we're hitting our goal. And I actually finished third. That's a podium. Okay, so win wasn't on, and I don't think at that rate it was gonna happen. We're just concerning with his stats that Ant B smokes. Well, I mean, Ant B's Ant B. Lost Saints. Both of those horses blew by us pretty fast. Yeah, B on the spurt. Tells me I could have started a lot sooner. Maybe that's actually what I need to do. Which is weird. He doesn't. He only has 57 stamina. Like, <laughs> how soon do they want me to start him? Cleopatra. She's up in the Libra Stakes. She's already got one G1 to her name. Could this be her second? She's the favorite. East of Pool is the second favorite. But uh, did we not already beat East of Pool? Am I thinking of Special Pool? She's got 78 stand, which is fantastic. From Flying Cowboy out of Awesome Autumn. Only real ability she has as far as late now, obviously, is last quarter leader. Don't know what the auto abilities are. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm excited for Cleopatra's potential. But Lee's Cowboy, Irish Legend. Those two are question marks. Irish Legend because... The horses are on Yeah, he's the just... I, I, don't, I don't know what his deal is. I feel the potential in there, but it's very hard to, to get to it. And, uh, Lee's Cowboy seems like he's just missing a step. He has pretty solid stats, except for his lower than preferred stamina. The horses are in the gate. And actually, I, I remember talking about Toxic Blonde and her stamina earlier. Well, the Lee's Cowboy, his, his is actually lower than hers. So yeah, point being, um, Irish Legend and Cowboy, they are, uh, like I said, they're a little bit tricky to figure out. Cowboy especially. Like, we've dropped so many races with him that we should have. It's, it's becoming frustrating. <laughs> like, I hate to see a horse with good stats in the categories that I want, except for stamina, obviously. Like, that's one category they didn't give to him. Don't slow down too much. Relax, relax. I just meant a little bit. Not that much. My gosh. Okay. But, um, yeah, he has really good stats for the most part, as okay, far as, like I said, the important the categories. But can't put it together on track all the time. Cleopatra, she is stacked with stamina. I'm just going to have her run. They're in the home stretch. There we go. And we do get last corner leader. Take off. Give her a love tap. Is this a joke? Come on, Cleopatra. Put them away, please. Put them away. Let's go, my girl. Show your left to go. It's not over till it's over. Come on, dig in. Dig in. Dig in. Dig in. Don't let the eight get you. Come on, Cleopatra. Come on. Finish. Oh, my gosh. That's a photo finish. There's nothing I could do. The eight could have gotten us. Yeah. Easter pool gets us legitimately. Wow. Oh, bro. Okay, the start wasn't great. Position wasn't great. Did I have her out of position? Oh, gosh. 
Maybe I did. I. Hmm. Yeah. I. I'm gonna let that one go. I. That's one of those races where I just don't really have an answer for. <sighs> Real happy. She's up. Expected to finish 12th, so no pressure. She's running on the dirt. Oh, man, that race with Cleopatra, that's... <laughs> A-Horse literally... You know what's crazy, though, about that race? If we win it, the rest of that stuff doesn't really matter. The horse it's the fact that we lost it in the, the game is like, oh, you're awful, basically. You know what I mean? Like, me... Like, those Ds probably wouldn't have been game. Ds. I feel like when I have won races, those grades go to, like, B or A. That was a beautiful Maybe start. a C. But yeah, that's... I mean, that was an easy race to win, and just... He used to pull clothes on us. There was nothing I could do, but... There wasn't a real answer from Cleopatra in that race, which was kind of sh surprising. She didn't really... She stayed out in front, but she didn't kick into an extra gear. I was expecting it, and it didn't happen. Like with Butterfly Effect, you know, when she gets challenged? Butterfly Effect will answer the challenge and put them away. Same thing with Tigris. Same thing with Gemstone. Vivid Gemstone. Uh, Cleopatra. I don't know if she has that, that extra gear yet. She should. And obviously not saying I, I couldn't have done anything okay, better. But I'm just like... Should be a race she wins. East of Pool just closed in on us. There was like literally nothing I could do. <laughs> they gave me a bad spurt rating. I... I I don't know if they wanted me to go sooner or later. I don't know if they wanted me to hold off. I feel like if I would have waited any longer, it wouldn't have worked either. You know what I mean? Show your guts. Like, if they're telling me I was supposed to wait, to I think East of Pool would have flown past us. They were all... Her and the rest of the field were already kind of closing in on us. So I can't imagine starting any later would have helped. Real Happy's looking really good on the dirt here. She's not a dirt horse, people. She's a turf horse. She gets stretch burst, and uh, she's not going to finish in the money, but close to it. Seventh, right? Eighth. She's supposed to finish in dead last. I'll take that. And uh, Petite Ridge sets the record. Yeah, that race with Cleopatra, that was a weird one, man. Really, really weird one. Like, that felt like our win until it clearly wasn't. Tigris of Stone is up in the parent sprint. She doesn't really need to be in this race, but she is. Still a grade one she can try to, uh, obviously, add. To her tally because I don't think she's she still doesn't have a sprint champ title yet so winning any of these races does help her with that she's still good enough to be as competitive as she needs to be and uh let's get her to the front closer towards the front right behind the leader and this is her race to win or wherever the leader is on track I mean we're running it down the straight so the horses are on the track all right, blah, 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 blah. The horses are in the gate. Ah, certain races bother me so much in this game because Great I'm just start. like, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> it's not that I want to be fixated or obsessed over it. I'm just like, that is something I need to, like, fix, you know, because I don't want to lose. E it's one thing if we just lose a race because we're just not competitive enough that that's fine but losing a race because of just something weird or, I, I don't like those type of losses you know stamina's already dropping we're not even running that hard bro they're kidding right two furlongs to go wow but she's this is this is what i was expecting from cleopatra this type of pull away she didn't do it in that race against east of pool this is exactly what I was expecting, and it didn't happen. And that might be the difference between Tigris of Stone and Cleopatra and any other horse. We have a winner. Tigris is so good, man. She's so good. Another win for our girl. She's still in the GWS Sprint title hunt, too. That's the crazy thing. And, like, a, obviously, Tigris would be a better long-term broodmare to put in the barn compared to Toxic. Toxic's really fast. She's the much faster horse, but her stamina's not good. But Tigris just, I mean, she wins that race. So now she is... She's either in second or tied with Toxic. She might be in second. Race after race after race. Paris Cup with Golden Boy. 
This is GWF's turf territory. It's been a while since we've done a race. If he wins this, he's in the fight. If he doesn't win this, and if he finishes, I would say, third or worse, then I think Golden Boy is going to be one of those horses, like Stargazing, that doesn't get into the Hall of Fame. And I just missed the window with both of them. I waited too long. But they were horses I, was, I should have gotten into GWS contention very early, and I waited too long. I waited till way after they were past their prime, and they just weren't the type of horses to still be winning GWS races the on a regular basis. Are so. on the track. Again, it's disappointing. I think Golden Boy, Stargaze, and they both have done enough to put themselves in the Hall of Fame, but, you know, it's my fault. I just... I to stop zooming in on my jockey's butt. We get it. Let's go. Paris Cup, 12 furlongs here. And, uh... The horses yeah. are in the gate. Like, it's so conflicting right now. We have great horses that are winning, as I expect. And then we have other horses that I think could be great, but aren't winning quite the same. It's a roller coaster of emotions I'm going through. Now, obviously, I want all my horses to succeed, but the horses that are really talented, like, I always, always want them to show that talent. And sometimes when I feel like they can't do that, it, it does feel like a disappointment, because it's just like, you're too good of a horse or whatever to not be winning these type of races. You know? I've never had that type of thought about Butterfly Effect. I've never had that type of thought about Tigers of Stone. Vivid Gemstone. Uh, as far as horses we're racing now. You know, those type of thoughts have never crossed my mind. Because I know they're going to perform at their best and they're going to win races they should win. And if they don't win a race, it's because I did something wrong. 9 out of 10 times. These other horses, though... It could be partly me, I'm sure, but I also think it could be partly the horse. So, just trying to find that rhythm, man. It's all about rhythm. Golden Boy's looking good here, though. Like, if he wins this, he's his Five Hall of Fame hopes are still go. alive. I think this is going to be a very tough race to, to win, but he's expected to finish six. So they're not saying he's... I mean, 14 horses in this field. He's supposed to beat okay, another this eight. Is where the race is Granted, won. the game never gives me awesome favoritism anyway. So if they're still saying we're supposed to finish six, that's that's winnable. We've won races from this position before. Does he have last corner leader? I can't remember. And they're in the home stretch. Okay. He's got the stamina. Let's go. Ah, I'm supposed to start him sooner. He doesn't have the speed to keep up. I botched that. I botched it. I botched it. I botched it. Maybe. Yeah, no win is happening. Lost the head to head. Oh, I could have gotten in front of those horses. Look at his stamina left. Oh, I botched that one hard. Like, we're gonna finish in fourth, potentially. Dang it. Third. It's a great result, considering I. We could have won that race. We really could have won that race. A on the spurt, yeah. I waited a tad bit too long. I almost forgot. Yeah, he doesn't have the speed to fly down the track, man. And I swear I told myself just to get him out in front. Ugh. Man, yeah, that was a weird week. Uh, real happy she did very well in the dirt. Cleopatra, disappointing lever stakes for me. Lee's Cowboy, okay. And uh, Desert Falcon, yeah, everything I was hoping. So, wow, Tigris and Toxic are literally tied. I didn't know if that was going to put her on point. They are. Well, at this point, and Golden Boy is... <laughs> what is happening? I did say this about Tigris. I'm like, she'll either be in second or she'll be tied for first. They, they are tied. So at this point, Tigris is going to have to run it. Oh, I can't even... Oh, Wow. You know what I just realized, though? <laughs> as much as that may suck for Tigris of Stone, uh, there's only one more GWS sprint race. I put Free Fear in that one, ironically. Like, I could have put Tigris in there. Gosh dang it. I wasn't even thinking. Something told me I should have waited to not put anybody in that World Mile Sprint or whatever race it is in a couple of weeks. That could have been Tigris's chance, but... Look at it this way. Uh... Modest Style, who's in third, would have to win the next two races or at least do well enough to try to beat us. I think Toxic Blonde's going to take the GWS because 
Tigris can't run in another race, I think. So she's going to be capped at 30 points. Toxic Blonde could still hit 42 if she wins that last race, which she should. And Golden Boy somehow is tied with Pale Rhythm. What This GWS turf has been a grind this year. I, I can't even believe we're still on the hunt. It's not like Golden Boy is doing bad. I, I botched that last race with them. We, we really could have won that. But the fact that we're still in the fight is, is awesome. I just went through that whole thing about Golden Boy not getting into the Hall of Fame, which still may not happen, but like it could it it also could happen. Like we're right there on the cusp. We're like literally right there. Um I wasn't expecting I just assumed that another horse would have shot up to the top from winning or maybe another race we had him run in or something, but no, we're still there. That's awesome. So all hope is not lost for Golden Boy. And we're going to have to run him in the 12 Furlong Continental Cup. There's, we don't have a choice. He's still in that fight, man. Tigris, I'm so sorry. I The, the thing about Tigris is she, her stats are so... I mean, she doesn't have a single bad stat. I could We could still give her a GWS run next year as a 5-year-old. I'm not retiring her, obviously, this season or next season, so... If I retire her, it'll be at the tail end of her five-year-old career. After she's hopefully have won a GWS title, I just... Do I try her again in the sprint, or do I put her in the turf? I don't know. She's not doing too well. So I guess that works out anyways, right? I mean... Chances are... Is she going to be in the green? Yeah, she would have been in the green for these races. But again, it's nothing she can run. Um, so we'll just wait till she's back in the blue. Neptune S, nine furlongs. Does she need that? Hmm. She's won grade ones at all sorts of distances. I don't really know what to focus on. So I'll go ahead and run her in that race against the Phillies. And Toxic, she is looking to become a sprinting champion. He's Cowboy, A ranked. Look at that stamina. Like, why would they give me such good stats and then say, oh, hey, here's 57 stam? Like, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. Ten races and only three wins. This is what I mean. This horse is. These Cowboy, I, I don't quite understand. Now, the last three races have been much better. We've been consistent, finishing it above our odds or right at the level, but. Still, a lot of those races should have been wins. I just. Last corner leader, we've tapped into that. I, it, to me, it's this. I don't know. I, I don't know what is keeping him from being that horse that he needs to be with his stats. I don't know what to do. We need to win. That's what we need to do. We need to win. He's already three. He's about to be four years old, and not a single Grade One victory with his stats. That's a problem. Like, if I can't win with this dude anytime soon, I, he might be a flop. Fine Cowboy and Lee's Gold. I would have never thought those words would even come out of my mouth. That the horse would potentially be a flop. Because he's just not winning the races we I want him to win. And I'm doing my best. It's just it's a struggle. I'm going to go ahead and run him in this grade 2. Because there's not a lot of suitable grade 1s around. So let's see if we can at least get that. Wow. Cleopatra, they want her in a grade three. She's not doing too well. And they're still not telling me squat about her. So that was her third race. She does have a grade one win, though. So that, that's a good thing. I mean, she was supposed to win that grade three. She finished fifth. And then she came back. She won a grade one. And then she was supposed to win the last grade one, and she finished second. Like, what is it about you? I don't know the rest of your stats. I have no idea what it is. No, 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 no idea. She has great stamina, though. So should I be running her at the front? I thought I tried that in that grade three. Did I not? And it didn't work out. I, I... She has such raw potential. We gotta get it figured out with her sooner than later. She's not a horse I, I can afford the luxury of taking a long time to figure out. Like, I'm gonna run her in a grade... Grade three or open? Six furlongs? 
gonna run her in an open. We just we, we need wins. I need good wins, easy wins, to then figure out the rest. They want Desert Falcon in the Young Crown Cup. Fine by me. Let's rock and roll. Mr. Falcon is one for one. And all they've told me is his staying is 62 and he likes the turf. And he has close race okay, stretch burst, and two other latent abilities with rough track. <sighs> is Blue's Breeze is gone, right? Or is he still back there? Because Blue's Breeze and Fiery Dancer could be like some weird, like, hidden, you know, awesome pairing for us. <laughs> Gosh, my allergies are really messing with me. I apologize, guys. I think I'm going to try to do one or two more races and then uh, probably call it for the episode. I would have made up the, the lost time in the beginning dealing with Irish Legend. But let's, actually, let's look at the yearlings real quick. New Legend of Chasing Hearts. Four Star Future. That's Valley King. Burning Wind, Flying Cowboy, and Fiery Dancer. I wonder. Fly, Fiery Dancer might actually be a decent broodmare. She comes from Sedate Ruler and Aunt B, remember? So, Burning Wind, true third generation horse. This might be a family. The Flying Cowboy, Fiery Dancer. If uh, he turns out to be successful. And then Blues Breeze and Awesome Autumn. Four Star Future and Flex. It's a filly. And she'll be a second generation horse. So, anybody? Let's see. Lee's Golden Diamond Plan. Already have a three star future, three star flex. Colt. No shocker. And then Diamond Plan and Moon Trapper as well. Already have a three star future and flex. Are you guys noticing something? I'm noticing like the brood mares that I thought weren't going to give us potentially good horses. It appears so far early game. They may give us better horses than I thought. Moon Trapper might give us a potentially five star horse. Like what? And Fiery Dancer, uh, with Burning Wind, is only three stars. Valley King is four from Chasing Hearts and Fine Autumn. That makes sense. All right. Blues Breeze is still back here, right? Because I, I was talking about in the last episode. I'm like, uh, thinking about horses, studs I would have to get rid of if we need to make more space. <sighs> Blues Breeze, he's making a case for himself so far. A better case as of recently. Like, I'm not getting rid of Diamond, Viv Vivid, Stargazing, Moonbeam, Silver, uh, maybe, Cowboy, I don't know. That's the only problem, man. Like, we have so many good horses, horses that have done well on track, other horses I want to use for breeding, it just, it, it's so much. We don't have the space. I don't know what I'm going to do once we get to that point. Gonna have to really pick and choose and look at which studs which brood mares have given us the most successful dominating horses and those are the ones that are definitely gonna have to stay everybody else you know and that's probably what i should do i should look at you know like the studs and count up how many grade one winners they have given us like how many horses that have come from let's say uh flying cowboy have become grade one winners and how many of them had won titles i think that should dictate where you know i keep my strongest horses in the barn Favoritism, I'm probably going to have to put aside at some point. But, anyways, Formal Opera is up in a sprinting race, expected to finish seventh. <sighs> I'm not going to lie, man. He's one of those horses where it's like I could continue racing him for another year, but I don't really want to. I feel like I've done what I wanted to do with him. The horses, you know, are on he's the in the hall. He will be in the Hall of Fame. We can retire him early and use him for next year as well. A diamond plan. I mean, my gosh, next year's green is going to be insane, 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 insane. Absolutely insane. Eventually, I do want to dine, dine size. What, Eric? Downsize our horses. When I say that, I mean like we have like 21 now or 20, whatever it is. I would like to get the back to 10. Are in the gate. I know that's probably unrealistic, but I think I can. I just have to make sure. To go. Doing what I said I wanted to do. I really want to focus on keeping the strongest horses around. Yes, there will be my project horses I like to have, but I'm going to reduce a number of that. A number of those as well. And I legitimately just want the strongest horses around. Because uh, there's still so much we have to achieve in this game, and I shouldn't be wasting time with just... Project courses that won't do much but just win a couple of great ones. You know, and that's about it. 
thing I gotta start thinking bigger picture sooner than I than I expected as we just we're, we're limited with space in the barn and then I also don't want to be managing 25 horses like an episode which is not fun at all that is not fun for me and they're in the home stretch to each their own I'm sure maybe some other people may like it but I can't now I don't know if this was a good time oh, spurt or not I would say probably a garbage one because they're pulling away now I think Formal is going to claw back to finish on the podium in some way. Like the eight horse is absolutely gone. But to be honest, this is a race we really could have finished a lot better than I did. And this is what I mean. Like I just I I I, I got to be honest. I don't think I'm just I don't think I'm in the mood anymore to like try to run the perfect race of Formal Opera on turf because that that has been his turf career. Like I I've been able to win. Yes, but it, it's it's more it's much more of a challenge, and it's just like a this dude's already won enough type of like I don't need to like continue to challenge myself with him. On the dirt, it's really easy because he's a dirt horse. The turf, it's like doesn't always go according to plan. So you know what, formal opera man, you've got four titles. I could achieve more with you. I just don't want to. I just don't. I think he's done enough. Fifteen wins, or excuse me, seventeen wins overall. Fifteen grade one wins. And four titles. Like, you've done enough, man. You've done enough. And um, I am perfectly fine with retiring him out on this note. Because, again, I wasn't even planning on getting him. And I ended up doing it just because it's like, okay, it's it's freaking Secretariat. You know, why not? That's, like, literally about it. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and retire him. Just uh, getting a snapshot of his stats here and his titles and... We will, uh, yeah, let him enjoy his days. Next to Diamond Plan. Can, can you... Oh, next year's reading is going to be really, really, really fun. Yeah, look at this Hall of Fame list. When I say look at it, it's not like it's some super long, great list yet, but it'll get there. Only, you can only have three pages worth of Hall of Famers, so what happens? Do you just start to replace horses? I guess so. Like, Awesome Autumn, she's a horse I'll replace. I, 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 like, she doesn't need to be in there. Same with Blues Breeze. Diamond Plan deserves to be in there. Chasing Hearts, for sure. Vivid Legend, I guess. Western Tiger, for sure. Desert Diver. Yeah. I mean, he could be replaced at some point. But he's my first Hall of Fame horse. He does have to stay. He stays. Western Tiger stays. Vivid Legend stays. Chasing Hearts stays. Diamond Plan and Moonbeam. Awesome can go. Vivid could eventually go, and so could Blue's Breeze. I'm not crazy about needing to keep them around if, like, we ran out of space. And we officially have no more free space for breeding. So that's it. That's, like, literally it, people. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and save. We'll check them out. And then um, I think that will conclude the episode for today. Pretty successful. I mean, I don't can't remember, recall the last super, super bad episode I had. Because, well, we don't have bad horses anymore, really. Like, bad episodes were more frequent when I kind of had mediocre to bad horses. Now that we have Hall of Fame-worthy horses, yeah, it's not as much struggling, finally. Only took 33 years in the game, but you know what? Better late than never, right? So, all these horses are C-ranked. It's fine. Cleopatra moves up to A, or she was already at A. All right, let's not get distracted. Let's go ahead and look at the eval for former opera. I did see double S for eval, I think. Classification. Hopefully it's double S, but no kidding. Or no wonder. No wondering about what they would do, because I figured it wasn't going to be double S for both. I have don't think we've... I haven't had a double S eval and classification horse in this game, or maybe any of them. Yet. We'll get that horse. Butterfly Effect could be that double S horse. For both. I don't know. But Former Opera is the uh, the highest cost. And, um... Gosh, look at... Oh, man. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. But, but like, we're full. We're full now. Fortunately, I don't think we're retiring anybody else. Well, Golden Boy, but he's not going to make the Hall of Fame. Gosh, who do, who do I replace with who? Like, who do I replace with who? Do we have any horses coming out of silver? Or coming from silver? Because I want to use him for breeding. Uh, I don't want him taking up space. 
But I don't think I've used silver yet, have I? Oh, Irish Fleet and Silver, I think, next year? Yeah, I said those two for next year. I'm just trying to decide, like, who am I going to replace for Golden Boy? Blues Breeze could work. Like I said, I'm not getting rid of the top... For now, I'm not getting rid of, really, of the top four. Haven't gotten enough out of Moonbee yet. Like, his stats aren't terrible. I don't like the E-Temper, obviously. D-Response, not great. Speed, Staying, and Breaking are good. Stam does B, so that's all right. I mean, Silver's definitely got to go at some point. Next year, for sure. Cowboy's still really consistent. Blues is giving us really fast sprinters. So I, you know, I initially thought we were going to kick him out, but he's proving to give us some of our fastest horses on sprinting merit. Vivid is vivid. He's not going anywhere. Same with Diamond Plan. Gosh, this is tough. I mean, Silver's going to go next year. I don't want to get rid of Cowboy, but... I mean, do I have anybody else back here that is also from, like, Cowboy and Western Tiger? Moonbee, you have neither of them in your pedigree. I think Stargazing does, right? Okay, I totally forgot. I said I was just going to keep Stargazing around and basically Cowboy could go. Oh, man, it's going to be really tough once we get even stronger horses back here. Like, some of these dudes are going to have to go. But like I said, once we get to that point, I'll decide that based off of like success and all that good stuff to determine who uh, is the best to keep back there and who isn't. That'll do it, though. Appreciate you guys for the love and support on the channel. As always, I'm going to hear your thoughts in regards to today's episode. If there's any breeding pairs you'd like to see for uh, breeding, which I don't know if it'll happen in the next episode, because, you know, we still have a lot of races to get done. It may be the episode after the next one, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, regardless, if you have any ideas, since we now just retired Formal Opera, I just showed you all of our studs. Most of you guys remember the broodmares. They haven't changed, really. Like, we, I don't think we've added anybody new. Yep. So, uh, you let me know your thoughts. Comment section below. We should take it from there. Until next time, Horse Racing Gamers and out. We'll be over for test today. I'll see you later. And goodbye. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.